Hi folks, welcome to the blacksmith shop. I'm Lynn Ray and we've got a guest of blacksmith farrier with us today, Tim Hoover. How y'all? And Tim is showing us how to make horseshoes. Now we don't have a horse to work with, but we've got we've got some little uh, mock-ups of a horse's hooves. And what he's really showing us mostly is the terms and the, te the uh, technical terms for the different parts of the shoe, the tools that he's using, and why they're made in a certain way, and what functions they serve, and how it um, it's a system that attaches to the horse's hoof. Uh, so th that's that's what we're doing today. Uh, uh, Tim, they're getting the bar hot. I'm going to upset the center first. I'm going to bend it. So let's just watch him for a minute. You upset it so you, when you bend it, it won't get real narrow. It'll be, put a little material in there. So that hot area, it, got it will upset or yeah. thicken. And, and get wider when he strikes it on the end. It pushes the ends together. So when you bend it, it wants to stretch on the outside and scrunch up on the inside. So that upsetting helps put the metal there so it doesn't get thinner. Keep our stock size or something. And in blacksmithing, we generally call that material management. So what he's doing, he's, he's putting the material there first by thickening it, upsetting it, and then he's going to use that material in a specific way whenever it comes around into a, the curve. So this one is partially done, uh, but we thought that you'd want to see how it started from a straight bar. The horse you should start from a straight bar a lot of times, especially in the early days. So he's good enough to, to show us all this stuff. Now, while he's working on that, and if uh, anybody has any questions, please write below and we'll try to get these questions answered in more or less real time. So we've got a, quite a uh, array of examples. This, of course, would be a very large shoe. This would be for a draft horse, a working horse. The horse's hook would go here in this position. These caulks would be the brakes that would grip the ground and help him stop. And this part right here would be for to brace the hoof against the, the shoe so that it wouldn't tend to shear the, the nails off. This is a very large shoe, and that's the starting stop for a large shoe like that. So that's pretty amazing. Got my toe bent, and I'm starting my, I'm marking my crease, the groove in the shoe. You make it with a little tool called a creaser. It's handy, you know what it is, right? Get a creaser, make a crease. So he's showing us actually the motion of the work. So, so I got, got her mark, got her toe. Now I have to forge a heel on, bend that branch, and work on the crease some more. There's a lot of steps. And it's and not all, you can't do it all at once. You gotta eat it back up. And since the shoe, uh, like we have our right and left hand, a horse has right and left hooves. And so they're not symmetrical, they're not just straight. Uh, like if we had a, a, a shoe that didn't have a right or a left, it was just straight. And so he builds these to, to fit the horse, of course, but this side here is a little bit wider swing to allow for right or left hand. So I just wanted to point that out. So he's got to account for all that. And he's got it all marked with a series of punched holes. And there's one of his marks right there. And he had one here and one over here that probably got absorbed with this crease. I think that's the beginning of one right there. So what he's done is he's got a mark here, here, and here. 
And when he completes that crease, it'll look like this. And it'll also have the holes. And the nails will go in those holes and set down in this groove. But anyway, let's watch him work for a minute. This is You got a nail? I had a hole. And I just dropped it. Oh, you had one of the slugs? Yeah. Yeah. This is what comes out. So um, while all this material is being moved, the only part that is removed is that little slug right there. That that was what the tool punched out. The Pritchell, the Pritchell punched it out. We lost it. Okay, it fell off, so it's no problem. Let's just watch him work. So that's just forcing the heel on there because you can't have it square. You would, if we had a horse here, we would try to correspond that to his heel and his foot because they're no different depending on the angle you want to come in. So you're fitting that to a you particular the, horse. Yeah, you fit the heel also. Some horses will have a, depending on, it has to do with the angle that you come into the heel. So if this got to kink in real much, this is not as pointing toward the center so you know now we're going to mark our crease some more going to get it established pretty good so as it went as it lowered in, in heat it's better for the creaser to work with yeah. you can make a better crease doesn't distort the metal quite as bad but you had to hit it hard No, it don't look like I'm hitting that hard, but the mere mortal couldn't do this. They, <laughs> got so what is that you're dipping in? That's a, it's kind of like a wax. Yeah. Or a, uh, this oyster is usually use hoof packing, and it kind of cools the tool, and then freezes it, makes it all stiff. Because if it just got real hot, it'd be sticky. So he's doing half of the shoe. So we have our crease established. And you see there's a little bump right there on the outside, but we'll have to work that out. And we'll just forge it, forge it back. Now I'm gonna mark my nail holes. We want one about the widest part. Then one pretty close to the center, the top. And then the middle one I always have trouble with because you supposed to be right in the center and I don't seem to be level-headed enough to figure out how to get one right in the center <laughs> right <laughs> so those are, those are the that's, you notice there's no hole in this yet so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna gather that back up where that blew out right there and clean it all up and I'm gonna go back through it with my creaser and my punch and then the last thing I'll do will be pritchel it and knock those little bitty slugs out that's all the metal will remove. And that will make a hole that will allow the nail to go through the shoe yeah. and attach it to the horse. So the, uh, the crease is, uh, will allow that head to sink down in there and the nail will come out. Since the, uh, the hoof is shaped like this, this will actually come out of the hoof and clench over to hold it on. But the fact that this is um, got a triangular pyramidal shape head, it goes down into there and there can be some amount of wear as time goes by and the, the horse is walking, he'll wear off some of this but the, the shoe won't fall off or get loose because of the design of the nail and the crease. Like a wedge. It's wedged in there, so it's got a, uh, a good purchase on it. So there's a there's a really a lot to this. Yeah, now I'm gonna just gather that up, just gonna go back, right straight down, and I'm just closing that up a little bit. And I'm gonna do the edges, put a little chamfer. You don't really want sharp square edges. So you overlap your clothes, try to make a nice line. And I'm not hitting this very hard. He's always supporting it with the horn, yeah, the even horn. if he has to turn it on an angle. The horn's my die. I'm using that as a die. It's a 
and now we're back. It looks, it seems a little redundant, but it does work. Now we're back cooler again, so it won't blow out as bad. I'm gonna set that crease a little more, open it back up. I'll sit and use my punch. This is the, in between the crease and the critchel. So he can get a good can, hammer blow yeah. on it. It can take a pretty good abuse. You gotta smack it pretty good. And you just bottom that out. You just go right, right to the bottom of the anvil, right to the bottom of the chute. You just actually just hit it. it. And you can feel right there, it's different than when it's going through the chute. When it gets to the bottom, it gets real solid. And you just kind of flatten it all out again. Make sure you get a lump or two in there. And get rid of them. And now, it seems like it's cold, but it's not really cold. It's just, it's still pretty hot. But we just have to remove a little piece of metal. And we want to shear it off. We don't want to, we don't want it to be hot where it would bend and blow out. We just want it just to shear right off. So we go right to the edge of the hole. And then, and then, oh, too hot, I guess. You notice that he's got his tools right where he needs them. Yeah, yeah so see the pritchel just knocks that little bitty spot through. That's and the end of the pritchel. That's the end of the pritchel. And then, You'll see it made a hole. Where's it? The nail. And the nail, the shank of the nail corresponds with that. And it goes like that. And we'll just pop the other, other two out. And as you're doing this, you think of the angle of the wall. So the wall's a little steeper angle at the toe and as it goes around to the side it gets a little straighter so you, you angle them a little bit you angle this punch to go a little coarser then you throw it on the floor sometimes just does I don't know why. you never drop nothing heavy <laughs> every time we always say Drop something, don't try to catch it, just let yeah. it fall. We'll pick it up in tongs. So that we have half a horseshoe made. Isn't that pretty? Nails come out. It's a little coarser toward the toe, a little finer, and they're angled because the wall gets a little thinner. All this has a has a reason we're doing it. I mean, that's not haphazardly saying, oh, I like to do that. It all corresponds with a horse. So you, you have to you have to have the animal in mind when you're doing this. So some people may say they don't they don't do this kind of stuff so they just shoe the horse. But when you're making a shoe, you are shoeing the horse. You're yep. thinking about the horse, you're putting the horse's foot into the shoe. And uh, the horse is your pattern. Yes. You gotta there's some laws. You gotta have the nails go in the right spot or you either the shoe won't stay on or make the horse sit. That's a law. And a, a, a sore-footed horse, he may have been injured in the, no one's fault, but if the farrier or the blacksmith, in this case, this type of a blacksmithing is called a farrier, if the farrier does something to injure the horse's hoof, he's going to be sore-footed because of that. So there are certain rules that he absolutely has to follow uh, and certain guidelines. And, uh, it starts with the horse, but then all the horse's hooves are, are made in a similar way, but he has guidelines on the hoof itself. Yeah. And so he custom fits every hoof, I mean every every shoe to the hoof. So it's there, like I say, it's quite a bit of, uh, quite a bit to it. There's a lot to it. So we really are learning a lot from Mr. T. It's probably like anything, you know, it looks, looks real simple until you get through really down into it and you're like well good goodness so the fact that i'm holding one that's in that condition that he's worked he's going to go ahead and complete this side now we wanted one to illustrate what he's doing so now he's going to actually complete the shoe 
and uh, show us the, the difference between right and left uh, on the shoe itself and how they correspond uh, with the horse's hoof. Uh, but we're going to proceed with that. He's got that nice and hot. So the inside, you actually put a little, make it just a scope fit narrower. Oh, really? Yeah. See, some of these fine points we don't know. Our Casey and I and those guys here in the blacksmith shop, we don't, we don't know those things. Put a little bevel on it so like if he steps on his, with his other foot, it's, uh, oh, it's soft slide off. It's not okay. as bad. He won't, he won't catch or trip with the other foot. I see what you mean. So, just bend it right around. So it's gonna, it's gonna look like a, a shoe as far as we're concerned and what we, normally think of as a shoe, this is about to look like, like a shoe. Yeah. When you bend it, it crumbles up on the inside, so you have to forge that back out. Not only the nails, you can't you can't put pressure on the sole of the foot, or that'll make the horse sore. have to not injure the horse. Yeah, that's a big, that's a big <laughs> Nobody will pay you if you've got your horse all curled up. Then. You're like, oh, oh. Well, Bobby wasn't crippled when you got here. What the heck? They don't like that. No, but. So we're here to help horses. That's that's our job, is to help horses. Help them do their job. And so he takes it very, very seriously. And each little detail makes a difference. Yep, just like a, I'm like a pit crew guy in NASCAR. You gotta hit it just right. You wanna run fast and go hard. Run fast, jump high. Have you ever you pulled your knives sometimes? Yes. Yeah. Uh huh. I do. I, I forge them in some and grind them in some. I mean, fuller. You put a fuller in. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, you do both on the on the fuller. Too. Yeah, I do them both yeah. ways. See this, even though this tool is only about an inch wide, you can get a pretty smooth line yeah. inside there. Oh yeah. If because we're working it cooler at a lower temperature. Yeah. You know, if it's real hot, then it, then it makes a so that's about an inch wide, but he can actually do a curve with it, yeah. even though that's a straight, more or less a straight yeah, it's, tool. It's a little curve. But yeah, you can just you have to be, it can't be real wide or you can't, you can't account for the difference in shape. Like if I had a great big thing and just stamped that out, the, the branch would have to be the same every time to get that where it goes. Yeah. So now, I have a, I just have to gather that up again, redo that and punch him nail holes. See the nail holes are not there. But you can already see the difference in the, the right and the left. This is the outside. It goes out and back in more, and this will be more oval shape. And it, that's pertaining to the horse's feet too, the way they're built. Horses usually have a straighter up and down on the inside of their foot because they have more weight coming through the center of their body down there. And the outside flares keep them sinking the mud, I guess. Well, I'm, also, I'm sure also, like you mentioned, uh, if their their feet are passing one another, yeah. So the straighter, more plumb walls they have on the inside allows for the comfortable walking. But you can just look at your feet. They got like yeah. we got this outside part it goes out, and this is straighter. You got more weight here. Yeah. You know, so I mean, a horse's foot is like your toe, but. It's the same shape. It's like yeah, like the that kind of principles. Yeah, it's very similar. Same thing. Kind of. So Mr. Tim is going to continue on working a little bit. So I think we probably are going to wind up the uh, the video. Uh, he's going to complete that, and he's also going to show us more. We're going to take lots of pictures, and we yeah. may post some pictures later. We're going to get Lynn to get that big sledgehammer and help me make one of the big shoes. Yeah, I'll, I'll be I'll be uh, striking. Mr. Tim here in a little bit, and uh, we might, or maybe, maybe him. Yeah, maybe so. Somebody. But uh, anyway, uh, for the 
Historic Arkansas Museum. We're glad you came by to visit us in the blacksmith shop. I'm Lynn Ray, and our guest today is Tim Hoover. Thanks for having me. And we're glad you was with us.